Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here at Mad About Skin, we're passionate about helping you to get the most out of your skincare. So if you haven't already, now's a fantastic time to click that link below, subscribe to the channel, ring that notification bell, and you won't miss out on any of our amazing future content. Now, in today's video, we're gonna be doing another best and the worst. In this video series, we take one brand, usually available at the drugstore, and we feature the five best iconic must-have products from that skincare line, and the five wah, 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 total misses. You guys have gone mad for the videos I've done in this series before. I covered The Ordinary, where we looked at some fantastic, fantastic products from my favourite skincare brand of all time, and exposed some fails, some products that just didn't work for me. We also looked at The Inky List, which is, again, another fantastic drugstore, affordable, fantastic British brand, called out some heroes and some zeros. I'll leave a link to the playlist up there if you do want to check out those videos before we get into today's video. But today is the turn of Paula's Choice. Now, the reason I featured Paula's Choice is a lot of you guys have come to me and said, I want to know more about Paula's Choice. Can you tell me what your favorite must-have products are from this skincare line? I would say Paula's Choice after the Inky List and the Ordinary are my third favorite mass market skincare brand. I love the fact they're cruelty free, fragrance free and colorant free. That's a ding, ding, ding before we even start. And they have some fantastic and deservedly cult favorites amongst their skincare line. There's also some products I've tried and just didn't really like, and that's what we're gonna be calling out today. So without further ado, we're gonna get straight into it. And in the spirit of positivity and bringing a little positivity to what has been a bit of a trying year for a number of people, we always start with the best. These are the hits, the cult favorites, and the things which I could fully recommend to you from Paula's Choice. Coming in at number one is gonna be no surprise to anybody. This is their best-selling product. It's a cult classic. It is advertised all over the place from YouTube to Instagram to Facebook. And that is the Skin Perfecting 2% BHA liquid exfoliant. I love this product. There are some people out there that say this is quite expensive for a liquid BHA. However, it's so much more than just a liquid exfoliant and I think it's deserved of the slightly higher price tag that comes with it. You can, if you really want to try this, before you invest fully in the full price, full size bottle. For $12, £10, you can get the mini, which will last you about three to four weeks. So actually, I love the fact that Paula's Choice do smaller sizes. I'll leave a link to the mini, actually. I'll leave a link to all the products which I feature today below. So if you do want to read up some more reviews, you might want to look at the ingredients in more detail or buy any of the products. The link is to where it's in stock is in um, the description bar. I love the fact you can get a mini so you can try before you fully commit. I just fell in love with this product when I first used it. Salicylic acid is amazing at withdrawing out the dirt, the debris, the impurities from the skin. It's fantastic for people with oily and acneic skin because it'll fix, it binds to the oil and draws out the excess oil from the skin. It's also really good at softening the keratin in the skin and that way it makes all of your subsequent serums penetrate that a little bit deeper, that a little bit more effective, and just get the most out of your skincare routine. So it's a beautiful, beautiful product to have in your skincare routine straight after your cleanse. I use this every single day, and I would move it, use it straight after my cleanser, move to this, and then apply my serums and creams in order after that. I think the reason this is number one, you can get so many other different BHA serums out there. The Inculus do a cheaper one, which I absolutely love. But the reason I chose this as my number one holy grail is A, it's the product I use the most, but it's caught for a reason. This has so many soothing and hydrating ingredients in beyond just the salicylic acid, the BHA active ingredient, which means a lot of the side effects which you can use get from a daily um, exfoliation, a daily BHA exfoliant in particular, such as the redness, the irritation, the dryness, the peeling, you don't get with this product because it hydrates and it soothes as it goes, which means it's just gonna leave your skin perfect to receive all the other serums that you put on after it. I would use this in the morning and then use your serums after and honestly your skin will feel gorgeous, baby soft, it'll help to erase some of the pigmentation issues that you might have and just do a deep cleanse of those pores. I absolutely love it. A common question I get is, can you use salicylic acid and glycolic acid together? You absolutely can. However, I wouldn't use two products, so like the 7% glycolic acid toning solution from The Ordinary and this one after the other. It'd be too much for your skin. If you do want to combine the two acids together, get it in an already combined product, so that way you know that it's skin safe. But, or alternates, so use this one day, use your glycolic the next. I love this product, and it's definitely, definitely a, a savior for anyone with blemish-prone, oily, or acneic skin. Number two would be there, another product which actually I've talked about on this channel before and you know I love, and that is their Azelaic Acid Booster 10%. Azelaic Acid is gorgeous. It's, a lot of people say, is there anything Azelaic Acid can't do? 
and I don't think there is. It helps to um, exfoliate the skin, though it's not strictly an exfoliating acid. It brightens the skin, which is fantastic. It's antimicrobial, so it'll help suppress um, the production of comedones, so people with breakout or acneic skin can benefit from an azelaic acid. It also helps to lessen the redness associated with rosacea. So this is a must-have product if you have rosacea or very red, inflamed skin. I love this product. It's a super, super gentle acid, which does just a bit of everything. And this is a really, really good strength of product. Um, you can get stronger azelaic acids. You can get 20% on prescription here in the UK. But I think 10% is perfect because it can be a little bit drying as an ingredient. So you don't want to push that to go to the 20%. I think stick at the 10% and just let those results come through gradually rather than going in a firm 20% serum. So this concentration is perfect. The price point is £40. Now, this is a little bit more expensive than the ordinary azelaic acid. However, they are totally different formulations. So this is much creamier and much more hydrating, whereas the ordinary is in a, in a dimethicone base. So it comes across much more silicony and slippery. It's personal preference, which you want. You know, if you don't mind a slightly dimethicone feel, that slippery feel, the ordinary might be better for you because it's cheaper. However, if you want a creamy, hydrating azelaic acid that sinks into the skin like that, you can use every single day and it's just going to be a gorgeous addition to your skincare this is the one for you and I definitely understand why people pay more for the Paula's Choice one over the ordinary because it's more hydrating and it just sinks into that skin gorgeously it's a holy grail for me I can't live without azelaic acid I've recommended it to loads of you guys who have said wow it's changed my skin and so hopefully you'll click the link below and check it out because azelaic acid is beautiful. I have also left a link to the ordinary one in case you are looking to go for a cheaper option and you like the sound of azelaic acid but you're doing it on a budget. Absolutely fine. Click the ordinary and really work out which of the two you actually need in your life but it's a beautiful product and one of their top te uh, top five for sure. Now moving on to third. It's going to be a little controversial because a lot of you are going to say the clinical retinol. Clinical retinol 1% has to be in here because it's a beautiful product. It's a super, super strength, high potency retinol, almost prescription strength, and it's got to be featuring here. Actually, no, I've chosen another one of their retinol products, which is their 0.3% retinol plus Bacuchial mix. I... I love this <laughs> and I didn't really expect to like this when I first tried it. Bakuchol is fantastic. I did a whole video on it, Bakuchol, which I'll link up there. So check that out if you want to know a little bit more about it as a product. But it gives you over time the results you get from retinol, but with none of the side effects. It's a plant alternative. Plus, combining it with retinol means it's just supercharged and you don't need to go in for the 1% clinical retinol because you get beautiful results with just a fraction of the downtime, the side effects and the sensitivity. So I have actually moved away from the 1% clinical retinol and onto this because I found the results to be very similar and yet it's just so much more of a pleasant um, product to use. You don't get the dryness, the peeling, the irritation, feeling like you want to scratch your face off, it's that itchy. You get none of that you have to work through that and it does go after a period of time with the 1% um, clinical retinol. But with this, you don't even have it to start with. And yet, I think the results are about 90% as good. So this is a fantastic trade-off for someone that wants retinol but doesn't want all the side effects, the downtime and the uglies that come with it. This is a beautiful, beautiful product. The reason I've chosen this amongst the top five, whereas there's loads of Bacuchol retinol combinations out there, but I love the fact that they put the strength on this. You know what you're getting. You're getting a 0.3% retinol, mid-strength, plus the Bacuchol to boost up the effectiveness of the product. Fully transparent, cruelty-free, fragrance-free, colorant-free, done. I love this. If you're looking for a Bacuchol in your life, but you don't want to do full Bacuchol and worry that you still might not be getting that powerhouse retinol punch, this is the product for you. It's not too expensive by Paula's Choice standards, but it's a beautiful, beautiful product. Number four is the C15 Booster Serum. You'll have heard me talk about this on the channel before. Vitamin C is life. It glows, it gives you a smoother complexion, it enhances your glow and your just the vibrancy of your skin. Everyone needs a vitamin C. It's also a super powerful antioxidant, so it protects the skin against free radicals. I love it. The reason I love this over a lot of other vitamin Cs is A, it's got the strength. It's a 15% vitamin C, which is fantastic. That's mid-strength. You'll get a light tingle, the beautiful glow-enhancing qualities of it, but it won't give you too much sensitivity in downtime. Also has ferulic acid in there. Ferulic acid is just a perfect, perfect, perfect antioxidant to pair with vitamin C. It makes the vitamin C work harder and faster and just supercharges your antioxidant protection. 
This product is £40 here in the UK and is a perfect dupe for the SkinCeuticals CE Ferulic, which I love, vitamin C and uh, ferulic acid combination, which is £130. So you're getting a very similar, not identical, but a very similar product for a fraction of the cost. Beautiful. If you want to mix your antioxidants, have vitamin C and an antioxidant in one serum, look no further. The C15 Booster, absolutely beautiful and a firm, firm cult favourite of mine already. It's only been launched a few months here in the UK. And it's already made its way into my skincare routine and I don't think I really can live without it. I love it that much. And finally, we have the Paula's Choice Advanced Smoothing Treatment 10%. That's a lot of words. What this is, is a beautiful blend of acids, exfoliating acids. A lot of people will come to me, as we talked about earlier in the video, can I combine different acids together to get a multi-level, multi-action exfoliation? You can, but I always say go for a product that has it pre-mixed because they'll have been tested, it'll be skin safe, and you know you're not damaging your skin. This is one of those products. So it's a 10% concentration of acids all mixed together. And in this, you get glycolic acid. That is just the standard, probably like the best exfoliator out there. It breaks the bonds that are holding the dead skin cells onto the good, glowing, fresh skin beneath. Beautiful surface level exfoliator. It's got mandelic acid in there. Mandelic acid has a huge molecule size, so it does much less of an invasive exfoliation. and is super gentle, but still packs a punch and will deliver a gorgeous, gorgeous results. It's got tartaric acid in there, which is a bit of an unsung hero of the exfoliating, exfoliating acid world, but I'll do a little bit of a deeper exfoliation. And it's got lactic acid in there, which will exfoliate and hydrate at the same time. This is like a multi-acid exfoliation dream overload. I love, 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 love this product. I don't know why it's one of their, one of those products that you don't hear a lot of hype about. This is an unsung hero and definitely, definitely you should check this out. If you want to up your exfoliation game a little bit from what you're already doing, maybe you're doing a daily exfoliator and it's working, but you want a little bit more powerhouse punch, this. Absolutely fantastic. Because of the blend and the formulation, you get very little downtime, side effects, redness, irritation, and yet you get all of the benefits of the exfoliating acids. Uh, speechless. Very rare does a product leave me speechless. This is one of them. Now, I've given you my holy grails. These are the products that you should rush out and buy this second if they're applicable to your skin type because I think they're so beautiful. But with our, every holy grail comes a fail. And now we're gonna move on to some of the products which mm, just didn't cut the mustard. Now, no shade. I don't wanna read any company to fill for their products. I am gonna justify the reason I didn't like these products personally. It's personal to my skin type and why I didn't think they worked for me. So I'd love to know if you disagree passionately with any of my selections here. Leave me a comment below if any of these products have changed your skin forever. And you want to disagree with me, let's get the conversation going. Number one is the Paula's Choice Clinical 20% Niacinamide Treatment. Now, a lot of people are going to say, Niacinamide, I love, love, love Niacinamide. I do, but I don't like this product for two reasons. One, the $50 price tag. You can get a Niacinamide for under $10. You don't need to be paying $50 for is a standard Niacinamide. Two, the concentration is just all wrong. 20% niacinamide is too, too strong to be using as an over-the-counter, in my view. I feel that, well, studies have shown that niacinamide works best in a 5-7% to concentration. So look for something like a 10% or under. You don't need this strength. What you can get if you use a niacinamide with this strength is irritation. You might get some light peeling. It's just not worth it. I don't think you're getting any extra benefit for the extra concentration that you're getting. Look for a 5-7% to ideally, but up to 10% is fine. The ordinary do a 10% niacinamide that's like one quarter the cost of this. You get that. You do not need this in your life. It's overpriced and it's the wrong concentration in my view. We're also going on to, for similar reasons, the Omega Complex Serum. Again, $50, so a hefty price tag for what is just a fatty acid, ceramide, moisturiser. I don't really get the purpose for this and why they feel they can charge $50 for it. Ceramides are fantastic at repairing the barrier function of the skin. It'll hydrate the skin. It'll give the skin overall a healthier look. Love ceramides. They're absolutely fantastic. For the same reason I love peptides. Amazing. However, $50 for a cream which is way too thick. It sits like a mask. It's way too thick for my skin. If you're super dry, you might like this a little bit better than someone like me who has oily, acneic skin. It's just overpriced. It's too thick. And I don't think you're getting the benefits that they're claiming. Go for something like a Cicaplast Balm for $7 by La Roche-Posay. Does very similar things. Barrier repair, moisturizing, hydrating. You just didn't need this in your life. Third is a relatively new launch for Paula's Choice and something which you've had probably heard quite a bit of buzz around online is the Triple Algae Pollution Shield. 
I hate pollution shields. What is pollution shield? No. What is that? It's just posh words for saying antioxidant. They really don't do a lot. I, there is some science that supports algae providing a physical barrier to the skin against external pollutants. There is some science behind that. But at $30, it's overpriced for what it is. I actually think if you want a antioxidant and pollution shield and you want to get in on all of that action get the neod survival which i did a review on i'll leave a link there same price but has so so much different mechanisms of action and better mechanisms of action that's actually worth the 30 dollars this is not worth 30 dollars and i think it's gimmicky and a bit ill thought through a lot of people get jumped on the pollution shield bandwagon when it came out and Paula's Choice was just that company. This doesn't do a lot much. It's not a very good antioxidant. It's not a particularly strong antioxidant. I just think there's better products out there. The Neod Survival, oh, amazing, beautiful product, same price, and it's like 20 times better than this product. That's the reason it's on the fails list. It's not bad. It won't damage your skin. It's just not going to do exactly what it says it's going to do. And there's better products out there. In a similar vein, I'm going to group together all of the Paula's Choice body exfoliators. They are good. There's nothing wrong with them. But I think they're overpriced for what you're getting. Body exfoliation is great. You know, people get bacne, which is can be really difficult to treat. So using a moisturizer with a built-in salicylic acid or glycolic acid will really help with that. We might get KP, you know, chicken skin, on the bobbles, the bumps that we want to get rid of. So yes, incorporating an exfoliator into your body care routine is fantastic for dealing with that. Just give me that all over gorgeous summer ready body. I get why people use them. I just think theirs are quite expensive. So I don't particularly like CeraVe, but if you don't mind CeraVe as a brand, then their SA resurfacing cream is a fantastic dupe for most of what they do in terms of the Paula's Choice body exfoliators and is half the price. Or you could just take your exfoliator, so say your 7% toning solution by The Ordinary or your BHA exfoliator by Paula's Choice, and just use it to the areas that you want to tackle. If you've got bacne, apply it to your back. If you've got chicken skin on the arms, apply it to the arms. You don't need a separate set of treatments, which is why I think these are overpriced and they're not delivering really what they say they're delivering for a reasonable price point. I would reach for something, the CeraVe, or just do what I would do. And I just take my normal exfoliators and put them on the areas I'd like to target on my body, top it off with a moisturizer, and you are good to go for a fraction of the cost of the Paula's Choice body treatment. Finally, and I guess a lot of people might be a little bit, this might be a little bit controversial because people do like this, but I'm saying the Paula's Choice on the go shielding powder SPF is another fail for me. Powder SPFs are, they're controversial and they have their lovers and they have their detractors. So a lot of people say they're not actually providing the SPF that they claim. They're quite difficult to apply and to make sure you get even coverage. And um, there's some discussion with the FDA around whether they're actually able to be called sun protectors or not. Here in the UK, we tend to, it's quite it's quite a niche group of sun protectors. We don't tend to reach for them. They're much more prevalent in the US and the Paula's Choice one is fine. However, it's not because I'm questioning whether powder SPF is appropriate as sun protection or not because I do think there's a place for having it in your routine if you're wanting to touch up on the go without ruining your makeup this is better than nothing however I hate the brush on this product I bought it because I really wanted to try out a um I wanted to try out a powder you know a powder SPF I wanted to see what the hype was about I quite like the product but oh that brush a, it's super bristly. It's really quite coarse and unpleasant to use. Second of all, it clogs. So you're, obviously it picks up oil from the skin. I'm quite oily anyway. So it picks up oil from the skin and then it just goes really matted and gunky and you can't wash it because the water gets into the product. So you can't really wash it. You can't keep it clean. So you're just spreading the bacteria all over the place. It balls up and it just it's really just really unpleasant what i ended up doing was getting a makeup brush that i could wash and dipping it in the unscrewing the end dipping it in and then putting that over kind of defeats the object of the product uh you got better coverage doing that because it's got so gloopy it wasn't actually coming out in the end you get better coverage just doing it like that however you shouldn't have to do that if you're paying like 40 dollars for a product you expect it to work so this is on a firm fail list i'll look at it again if they reformulate their packaging maybe just put it in like a in a you know in a pot and then let us just put it on with a makeup brush i think that would probably be better than this it, i get it's for convenience but it wasn't convenient in the end it was gunky and horrible so guys there you have it the best and the worst of paula's choice i would say paula's choice is a fantastic skincare line you know yes they have some fails that i've called out but all of those fails actually i could see working for the right skin type for them i just don't think they're universal and the products could be a little bit better or cheaper um but their holy grails are gorgeous i honestly if you haven't tried their bha liquid try it 
absolutely fantastic. They're azelaic acid. If you don't like the texture of the ordinary azelaic acid, reach for the Polar's Choice. It's creamier, it's less drying, it's gorgeous. I love their vitamin C. It's one of my new holy grails. Premix vitamin C, absolutely beautiful. And I think the smoothing treatment, I like, ah. Oh. That amount of exfoliating acids all blended together is beautiful. Definitely worth a try. Let me know, guys. Have I missed any of your holy grails? What are your holy grails and any fails that you found from Paula's Choice? Leave me a comment below. Let's get the conversation going. Hopefully, if you've liked this video, you'll give it a big thumbs up because it does really help the channel. And wherever you are in the world, I'm sending you lots of love from here in the UK. Stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.